I'm super excited to be here with one of my best friends, Aaron Smith, and also total badass in the health industry. Aaron is that health chick on Instagram, and she has worked with some of the biggest names in the expert realm of, of health, Dr. Daniel Pompa and Dr. Zach Bush. And so she's really familiar with a lot of the exa- advanced protocols and fasting and cellular health and the gut microbiome. She's super knowledgeable, and she's taken all of her goodness and put together something really, really special. And that's why I'm having her on the podcast today, um, is because she has put together an emotional eating summit called what we crave and is going to be so incredibly powerful. The guests that she has on here, I'm, I cannot wait for it to come out. I'm honored to have been able to be interviewed on it. And so today I'm going to have Aaron explain a little bit about who she is, why you did the emotional eating summit, like what sparked that? Because I know that you have so many things that you could create. Create. Like you constantly have, you're just like influxed with all of this incredible health information all the time. So I want to know why this is the thing that you chose to work on. And, um, and then we'll get into it. Some of the highlight reel of the emotional eating summit, like, what did you learn? What did you pull out of all these top health experts in regards to emotional eating? So I'll back that up and we'll start with a little bit of like your background and what brought you to this point of creating this summit in the first place. Yeah. So I basically became absolutely fascinated with emotional eating for the past five years because I had experienced it so much over the past five years. Um, like why do we black out and have the, the fuck it moment? Can I say that on, on this podcast? Yeah, you can. <laughs> what is actually happening in the brain? Like what is happening? Is it something else? What, like, why does willpower not work? Mm-hmm. Because I know this is not good for me. So, and I still do it. Like what is going on? So like being in the health space, right? We learn all of these things as we go, as we go along, but you look at my story, you can see why I became fascinated with it. So quick backstory, looking back, this started so young and, um, and it was all meant to be, of course, because now I can bring this to everyone, which is, it's all in the big tapestry of life. It's all amazing and perfect. Mm -hmm. But growing up, I was constantly eating. I was mostly because I was not eating nutrient dense foods as a kid. We all grew up that way. Like well, most of us did fake processed, lots of sugar, junk. Rarely did I eat real food. My parents didn't know any better. Costco muffins, cereal, milk, candy, ice cream, pancakes, you know, sandwiches on white bread and low fat mayo and crappy lunch meat. And, and, and then I also grew up with a mom who was Italian and she would cook when she would, it would be like, it's all love, right? It's all like food was love for me too. But I was also extremely skinny growing up and I played basketball and fifth grade into high school, I turned into a little, I was a late bloomer and I turned into a little baller and my dad was always trying to put meat on my bones so I could rough house with the big girls. And I was this scrawny little scrapper and I, I could never gain weight. And this is partially genetics and also, uh, just that I was in sports all the time. So I was constantly in a fed state all the time. Like I was constantly eating and I had wired my brain to be eating all the time. And I, and also like I couldn't gain weight. So it was like, go ahead, like put it all in. Right. And so food was comfort. I could eat as much as I wanted. Food was love for me. It would just, I would come down, I I would come home from practice and I would just calm me down. It would soothe me and I could just chill out because like high school varsity basketball, that was, that was like a big deal back then, you know? Um, and so fast forward, right. After eating, uh, like that way throughout college, you gain the freshman 20 and you're like, Oh my God, what is happening? And I can't eat like I did in high school anymore, right? And so I got into health and fitness and and nutrition, and that was the gateway, of course. Nutrition is the gateway. I became a health fanatic, and I fell in love with holistic health. And then I got into um, sales, right, outside sales in the nutraceutical industry. So in my late 20s, superfood sales was like my – that was my jam. So I was working with holistic doctors and preventative health, cancer, autoimmune um, autism and uh, these doctors that I was working with, they had really sick clients. So I, that's again, where I learned the nutrition and the gut health and detox. So being in that space for 10 years, I learned so much, but five of those years I was working with people. I was out in the field. I was working with doctors face to face. And then five years of, of my, my 10 year spread was doing sales, but at home over the phone, talking to do- these doctors, which was amazing. But it was like, I was sitting on my butt like all day, like behind my computer, high stress environment. And I, that's when I started grabbing for food and like, that's when I noticed it. So 
that's when it really crept in hard for me because I was like, my stress levels were astronomically high. And so all that wiring from a kid came in and granted, like I, I didn't have the tools back then that I know now, which clearly is why I'm putting on the summit, but I didn't have the tools and I didn't know what the heck I was doing. And, uh, <laughs> like I, you know, and again, well, we're in the health space, right. And we eat healthy and we overeat and it's healthy stuff, right? Like I know better not to eat crap, but man, I will eat, I will eat an entire cauliflower crust pizza. Right. Or uh, like during my keto phase, when I was learning about keto, I did it completely wrong. I, you know, it was like, well, fat doesn't make you fat quote unquote. So why well, could eat all of these bulletproof bars? Cause fat doesn't make you fat. So I would have literally four bullet, four bulletproof bars a day for three to four months straight, plus the keto snacks. Plus I was adding in dairy back at that time, which I didn't know that my body was like not having it. So like between that and eating all this fat and all these nuts and just in the stress, like in my gut, I completely wrecked myself. And I mean, I would gain like 10 pounds and then I would fast it all off because I know how to fast. Right. So it was like shame fasting. And then I'd be good for a while. And then I try keto again because that you being ketosis coming off a of fast and you do the keto thing again. And then with the stress, you got, again, just inflammation and not the right pieces of keto. Keto was amazing, but I did it all wrong. That's a whole other podcast of like how to do keto wrong, right? And so I became addicted to the bars, to the snacky food. And it took me a while to get off that freaking hamster wheel. And I was like, what the heck is happening to me? Like, I, I am like having a stressful moment. I'm grabbing for the food and I'm, I'm talking to myself like, I know I'm doing this. And I know it's not good for me. I'm not hungry and I'm still doing it. I'm like, what the frick is happening? I know it's just not about willpower. It is to some degree and a choice, but something else is happening. Like I would, it's like you just shut down and you just stop caring and, and your body just takes over. So I was like, I want to get to the root cause of this. I want to understand why, because it's not just about, oh, when this happens, you do this. It's like, no, why is, why is my mm -hmm. brain doing this? Because when we understand that, then that's when we can change it. And so- mm -hmm. I was like, and I've always wanted to do my own project, like know, knowing all of these amazing people and, you know, I wanted to bring something on my own. And so I did, I was like, I'm just going to do this. So I, I brought together all of the doctors that I knew from all these conferences, uh, you know, and that knew that had their specific thing that they could bring to this, you know, all these pieces of the puzzle. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, and I just, I did all the, the interviews and here we are. And it, I, and it's called what we crave because it is not just about the food craving. We are craving something so much deeper. So then. So uh, amazing. That's so, how yeah. yeah. They, and thank you for sharing that so vulnerably because that's so many people have been in that boat. I bet so many people listening to this right now are like, mm hmm, mm hmm, been down that road. So I know they're just chomping at the bit right now. What did you find out? Can you give us a little <laughs> bit of the highlight reel? <laughs> I know, I know. And I'm going to, I'm going to try and like give you as much content as I can because there's so many good nuggets. And I, and I just, you know, you know, we all geek out on this stuff. But, the first one is probably one of the most important that you and I have been super, we've been all about uh, recently is gut health and glyphosate. And I interviewed Dr. Zach Bush on this. And so I'm going to dive deep on this one real fast uh, because it's one of the most powerful ones. I think that a lot of us don't know about, like we know about gut health and the microbiome, but like we are not understanding what glyphosate is doing to our mm -hmm. gut at a cellular level and how it impacts the way we feel and our health and our mood and our identity. It is anyway. So here we go. So I interviewed Dr. Zach, who is one of my all time favorite human beings in the entire world. Besides you, of course. Um, I was up late last night doing my taxes, listening to him describe what actually happens in the gut microbiome. When we eat glyphosate, I was like mind blown. So yeah, please share. <laughs> yeah, he, um, I love, I love the way he says things so beautifully. Like we are hardly human. We have more bacteria than cells. Like our brain is ran by the bacteria in our gut. And if you don't have any bacteria in your gut and your gut is literally not working, this is where shit hits the fan. Okay. So in a nutshell, and Dr. Zach, there's a million podcasts you can listen to, but he's this brilliant supernova soul. And, but we're going to talk, go straight into glyphosate. So it is an herbicide and it's the active ingredient in Roundup and it's sprayed on wheat because it basically cuts the harvest time down and it's a big mo money maker for um, big agriculture. So in 1980s, late eighties, there's 11 million pounds sprayed a year and now it's 300 fricking million pounds are sprayed in 
on these crops every year and it's water soluble. So it's not fat soluble. So it doesn't get stored away and locked somewhere that it's, it, it literally it's in everything. So it's in our water, our air, our food, our soil, our rain, like we cannot escape it. And we're showering in it. We're breathing in it. We're eating it. Even if we can eat organic, it's still like everywhere. And, um, a, a side note, like gluten sensitivity is actually a glyphosate toxicity problem. So it's interesting. Mm-hmm. So we're mm-hmm. moving. This is definitely going to help. And that's definitely going to be a major part of it. And it, but it's still inescapable. And so what happens with emotional eating with glyphosate? So quick, quick background, which you and I love this stuff. So our guts, our gut lining is half of a width of a hair wide. Okay. And then our immune system is directly behind that. Right. And so, and it stretches the length of the length of two tennis courts. Okay. And that lining is our front line of defense, half of a hair width wide people. Okay. So think of how thin that is. Okay. And then inside that lining are the tight junctions and this tight junctions are critical tight junctions consider it like the mortar between the bricks. So in our cells and our gut lining, the mortar between the bricks, um, or between the cells is tight junctions. Okay. So they, the tight junctions hold everything together. They kind of like Velcro and they zip, zip everything up. So it's tight and it keeps the toxins out and it lets the nutrients in. So the, the tight junctions are like the heroes of our gut. They're like the protectors and glyphosate shreds and like disintegrates our gut lining. It destroys it. And so it destroys the mortar between the bricks. And so the toxins are now seeping in and your body starts attacking itself because it's like, there's toxins coming in and I got to attack. So that's how we get autoimmune, like plus brain fog, bloatedness, inflammation, IBS, like poor digestion, absorption, disease, like everything starts to fall apart because your, your gut is like the center of the universe for your health. Right. And so, and, um, I don't know if you guys knew this, but glyphosate also blocks the ability to create an essential amino acids that are actually critical that we cannot make on our own that we're supposed to be getting from plants. So it literally deletes the medicine and the food that we can't even build a healthy human body. So we're literally falling apart at the cellular level just because of glyphosate. And so this is where we connect the dots. So it makes you feel numb. It's like something is off. Like, like, you know, a lot of people say, God, I used to be happy. I used to like wake up and have this like vibrancy. And now I feel kind of just like blah, like dumbed down or not dumbed down, but like something is like just off, like disconnected. Your mood's kind of funky. You feel like in a, like whatever that just blah feeling is. And we're like, what is happening? Like I eat healthy. Right. But because our, our guts make our neurotransmitters in the feel good chemicals, right. Or most of, most of those chemicals are made in our gut and we stop our gut stops working. We can't produce those neurotransmitters. We can't produce the dopamine, any of that. And so we're, we start reaching for the food to get the dopamine hit, right? We're reaching for the carbs. We're reaching for whatever to make us feel good because we're completely like disconnected from ourselves. We are, we just, we want to feel whole and we don't. And it's like this, this thing that our body's trying to tell us something and we can't, we're just, we can't quite figure it out. And the doctors say, oh, you'll, you look fine. Like the Western medicine doctors. Right. And it's like, no, I know something's wrong. And people, some people are like, okay, probiotics. Yes. Probiotics are, you know, there's benefits, but if you're, if your gut is leaking and you have tight junction, like they're falling apart, it doesn't matter. You can't absorb nutrients. You can't like get what you need and you're letting toxins in. Like it's a wreck. Like you have to get to the tight junctions. You have to zip those up. And so the good news is, is, um, Dr. Bush, long story, but he found an, a, a combat, like an antidote to glyphosate and it's in ancient soil records. And what's funny is that soil, like actually he says this in his podcast, soil, if you look at the structure of soil and you look at the structure of the gut, it looks very similar. And wouldn't it, isn't it interesting how mother nature does that, right? In so many different ways in nature, but yeah, soil looks so similar to the gut and our gut health is literally found in the soil, like in like healthy, like amazing the way it's supposed to be soil not depleted and filled with glyphosate so it's not all hopeless but um it's a there's a new level of protection that we have to arm ourselves with every day now because we're literally going to war with glyphosate every day so if we want to be the best version of ourselves we got to get that into our system we got and that's our only way to combat glyphosate there is no other combat and 
um, it's a game changer. Like the way that you start to feel after you add that in, like, anyways, that's a whole nother story. But like my mom, um, was actually in the hospital recently with a stroke and she had strep throat and I was surrounded by sick people and I never got sick. Like that is where you notice it is when you are, you have a iron clad, like gut, like that is protecting you. That's where you notice it. So anyways, I'm sure you can post a link in your notes for that. But that is one of the, like, from an identity standpoint, cellular identity, and just connecting to yourself and, and getting the, the neurotransmitter function and the, and the serotonin, dopamine, like, all that working, that's, like, critical. for Yeah, and what is the name of that product for people yeah. to find? Ion Biome. Yeah, Ion Biome. So I'll, I'll put a link in the show notes. And, um, yeah, my, you know... Of course, I can't say for sure, but um, I shared this on Facebook that my mom, you know, was just battling COVID and it got really bad because she just had a major stroke too. She's very weak. She can't even walk, you know, and like she's, we're still trying to get her better. And, um, you guys were so awesome to ship her down some of that. And I appreciate that. And I, and I, you know, she started to finally, the nurse was telling me basically to prepare for your mom to pass. Like, I'm really worried that she might not make it through this. And, um, the next day I get a call from the director of her place and he's like, yeah, she's, she actually ate for the first time. It's been four full days without eating, but she ate that she ate today. Um, and then she ate the next day. And so then when I was talking the next time I got to talk to the nurse about it, she's like, I started giving her that, that mineral oil. And I was like, mineral oil. I was like, what is she talking about? (laughs) I was like, what is it called? She's like that ion stuff. I was like, oh, good. How often have you been giving her that? She's like three times a day. I'm like, okay, awesome. And it was like right after she started taking that, she got her appetite back. She had had, you know, they had her on Z-Pack. She had diarrhea and throwing up and all these things. And I knew her gut was in a bad way. And both of us know how important that is. I was just like, oh my gosh, like she needs her gut. She needs her gut health so bad right now while she's fighting COVID. And it was like, I mean, the timing was pretty, pretty amazing. In my opinion, like she started taking that and along with other immune boosters and it could, I mean, it could have just been timing, but she was getting better, but I don't think so. I mean, she was just like declining, declining, declining. And then boom, all of a sudden now she can eat again and she has her energy back and she's now she's off oxygen and her IV and things are looking really good. So, um, I think when you understand the immune system and the impact that in the impact that gut has on it, it's, it's a no brainer. It's like you, you have to look at gut health first, everything that's going on with, with, as far as, um, immunity issues or weakness or brain issues or over stress, you got to look at the gut. If there's any issues there, when I get clients, if there's gut issues, that's like almost all I care about at first. It's like, let's get that fixed. And then we'll, we'll work on some other things that along with blood sugar. But anyway, I'll let you move on. Thank you for sharing that incredible, awesome information. Like this is, this is really high level, um, information. Like a lot of, a lot of people go to very high level nutrition courses just to be able to understand what you just described there. So it's like, if this is not just like some, you know, fluffy extra piece of information. This is like core information to understand about our health and our mental health as well. So thank you for sharing. Of course. Well, it's, it's a game changer for me. Of course you want everyone to like, get like everyone is searching for these answers. And it's like, I, you know, 10 years of being in this field, it's like, just give it. Right. Exactly. Exactly. It's like fired up to give it to everyone. So yeah, right. it's, it's so awesome. So another one, and again, this may sound so easy and like almost too easy, but sleep is probably mm-hmm. side gut. And you and I have talked about this lately too. It can either destroy everything or it can change everything for the positive. And man, when I didn't get sleep back in the day, when I was like working out way too much, not sleeping, it's like it destroyed it, like my ghrelin, my leptin. I was eating, I had, I was a bottomless pit when you don't mm-hmm. sleep. Cortisol is high. Your hormones mm-hmm. are high. You don't recover. You don't get the results from your workout. It doesn't matter yep. how hard you work out or what you do. You will not get results because your cortisol is way too freaking high. And I'm talking like deep, restful sleep is what you need. Like seven to eight hours of deep, restful sleep is like like the most amazing, life-changing thing. Your body can finally just rest and heal. And like I swear, and so do you. You probably want to add to that of how much it's been a game changer just getting forced sleep, you know? Yeah, just, I mean, just recently, like, cause for about a year before this, 
um, COVID thing happened actually. Like, I mean, I was just, I've been going through monster growth in my business and it was a very stressful time for me. And I, I knew, I knew, I know, I, you know, no, quote unquote, I always say like knowing is, you know, there's a, there's a cognitive knowing and then there's a knowing knowing. Um, and cognitively I'm like, I know this is important. I should sleep more. Um, but I gotta get this stuff done. I gotta build, I'm in build mode. Like I'll, I, I will, but give me a year to build this stuff. And yeah, stuff did start popping up emotional eating, feeling hungry all the time. It was like really hard to not overeat, um, just feeling overwhelmed a lot. And then as soon as this COVID thing hit, like I was like, you know what? The gyms are closed, so I can't really do my early morning gym workout anyway. I'm just going to sleep as long as my body wants to. I don't have any pressing early morning appointments. I can still do my morning routine whenever I freaking wake up and biggest blessing ever. And I'm, I'm down somewhere between 10 and 15 pounds since COVID started. So it's been what, like, I don't know, five, six weeks down 10 or 15 pounds. And I, like, I just kept saying in the beginning, all I kept saying was, I cannot believe how not hungry I am. Like I have like zero appetite, like even though I'm still running, I'm still, you know, working out at home, it's the the sleep. And I, I just read a study about this and I'm sure you can get into it, but I just read a study like they did in my, on mice that showed that when they got less than five hours of sleep at night, they had a 48% increase in their body weight. Holy cow. You know, so it's, yeah, it's, it's huge. And that hormonal cascade not only helps you make better food choices and, and, and not as hungry, but less stressed overall, which then again, builds up the, your immunity, I guess, against emotional eating as well. Cause you're just not feeling stressed. So you don't feel the need for it. Yeah. And back in the day when I was, um, adding dairy back in, like there were certain things that my body was not driving with. So it would break my sleep cycles. I also think I had adrenal fatigue from the stress. So I would wake up at 3 AM and then you're just wrecked for the rest of the day. And again, you get stuck in this cycle. And I was like, just, I need to sleep randomly met Barton with upgraded formulas and freaking he gave me his magnesium again shameless plug for anyone that needs a solid night's sleep best magnesium supplement I've ever tried and I'm a huge snob with quality and absorption got the mm -hmm. best deepest sleep ever even if you only get five hours because you have a child waking up in the middle of the night or whatever deep mm -hmm. possible sleep like get some of the magnesium like it is yeah life changing. Yeah. Yeah. I'll put a link for that too in the show notes. Cause, and, and I do recommend if you're going to get it, get the test, get the hair mineral test and find out what you need, you know? Cause like for me, I found out even though I was taking magnesium, I was severely deficient in magnesium from taking that test. Right. So then, you know, it's like, well, guess what girlfriend, you need a whole bunch of magnesium, whole yeah. bunch, you know? And so it's, it's really helpful to know where your ratios are at. So I'll put a link in a coupon code for you guys in there too. It's like shameless plug my eye. You, you need it. <laughs> this yeah. is for you. <laughs> General, even though magnesium is one of the most needed, but um, all the minerals that you need, like you're supposed to be getting that from the food in the plant, mm -hmm. from the mm -hmm. soil. The soil is depleted and full of glyphosate, so we're yep. not getting the medicine. So our bodies yep. keep eating because we're like, I'm still not getting what I need. I need the minerals. So if you can yep. add that mineral supplement, your body's like, thank you, I got what I need. Yep. Down. Yeah. Okay. Amen. Amen, sister. Okay. So toxins besides glyphosate there are other things we're not addressing i interviewed dr dan pompa who is the expert on detox we go through some of the top hidden things that we're never educated about and how it affects our cells our hormones which is again directly to re related to emotional eating so we go through like silver fillings and like there's certain things that are out in the in this world that no one tells you that are highly toxic and how that it affects your hormones and then which affects all your organs and then you Again, your body is out of whack completely and um, draw, I mean, it completely destroys your vibrational tone. It, it completely like you, again, you just feel completely like something is wrong and you start grabbing for the food because you need to like feel better and you need the dopamine hit. And speaking of hormones, I interviewed L Russ, which was one of my favorite interviews because I love her style and her delivery is just freaking on point. And um, she had a horrific story with emotional eating because her hormones were completely messed up from her thyroid. And so she goes into that on that story and how it was a huge, massive roller coaster and how she got off the roller coaster with changing her diet, fixing her hormone naturally or her thyroid naturally and all the hormones and getting it all dialed in. And that was, that was a great interview. Um, and then speaking of hormones too, I also interviewed Dr. Caitlin Sizowski, who also talks about hormones, but it's more on insulin and insulin resistance, mm. diabetes, and how nice. that's a vicious circle and how For the sure. diabetes will feed emotional eating. And, and it's just, again, another hamster wheel and how to get off that hamster wheel. Mm. Um, so another one, and this is again, totally different 
this is different. Um, but, and that's why I wanted to bring with the summit is I wanted to bring every single aspect of what it could be. Right. So from mm -hmm. mental, emotional, physical, spiritual, like let's look at everything. So next one is Bobby Vogel with emotional trauma, mm -hmm. which is a huge one. So, um, in, like number one, do you guys know that emotional traumas, you can actually inherit traumas from four generations before you. So if you had someone that was in a, in like the Holocaust or, or a war or anything like that, you can actually inherit those emotional traumas and it'll get passed down for four generations. So one, that's mind blowing. But um, Bobby Vogel with Etheric Medicine, she is a medical intuitive. And the story of how that, that all came to be is completely incredible. But she's on my podcast too, guys. So if you haven't listened to that, she tells, shares that story. It is incredible. Yeah. And, and like her, it's a gift that she has because this kind of stuff isn't just, you don't just, you know, mm -hmm. you don't put stuff in books, but, but she talks about how you have an etheric energetic body and you also have a physical body. And when you go through an emotional trauma, whatever that is, can be anything, um, you, that emotion actually gets stored in the energetic body. And it, if you don't release it and you don't, um, like, if you don't release it, you, it'll actually get stored as like a, a gray dense matter over time. And that can manifest into the physical. So like all the physical ailments have, have a emotional, like, um, there's emotional roots. And so what she can do, those emotional roots could be anxiety. It could be, it could be anything, but it, whatever it is, it's shutting down our vibration. It's turning off our meridians. It's shutting our electrical system down. And that's the disease that, that starts to like happen in the body. And so she can go in and see where the gray matter and that dense, like gray matter is stored in the body. And she can go in and, and release it, which is crazy. Like she's, she has the most unique talent being a medical intuitive I've ever seen. And she's on, um, a podcast with Montel Williams too. That's amazing. That goes into it as well. But you know, if we let that emotional trauma sit inside of us for years, that's when we start grabbing for the food. Cause we have anxiety. We've got all this emotional trauma that's stored in our body and we haven't gotten rid of it. And it, it just mm -hmm. creates this stuckness and we, and we, and again, you release it and then it's like, you can break free. It's a huge point in breaking free from that, that stuckness. And yeah, mm -hmm. And I love this. I love this approach because this is how I do my coaching too. It's like, all right, well, let's get rid of the trigger. And then it's a lot easier when that trigger isn't there anymore. And so is it emotional or is it physiological? Either way, you got to deep dive and you got to find out, right? Because mm -hmm. we keep staying up here on the surface and we think I'm just going to not do that next time. Well, how has that been going for you? Mm -hmm. Working, right? Not. So right. we got to get, you got to deep dive. Is it physiological? Is it emotional? It's probably both. So let's get both of those fixed. And I love that you're bringing all of that, like so much food for thought for people to be like, okay, hmm, what is making me emotionally eat? Maybe I am just sleep deprived. Maybe it's as simple as that. Maybe you get some freaking sleep and this thing goes away, but maybe it's not, maybe it's deeper than that. Maybe you were abused and your abuser made fun of you for eating or whatever it is. You got to deal with that crap. We're going to stick in there. Maybe your little inner child is like, I'll show you, I can eat all I want, you know? Like, so it's, it's, you got to look at it. You got to look at it from all the angles that I love that you're showing that. All right, keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and it's funny because, well, it's not funny. It's really fascinating that emotional traumas can hit you harder than the physical or they can get, they stick more and your body stores both. But so yeah, just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there and you got to release it. And that's why Bobby's so amazing. But I also interviewed Josh Trent from wellness force on nice. ayahuasca on how to release emotional trauma too. Nice. Uh, that was amazing. And how that's a, a an amazing um, option. Um, but that's, it's a, again, that's another uh, day of learning about what that is. Um, he also talks about the importance of breath work and mm -hmm. how if you are not breathing, you are always going to be in fight or flight and, and you will always be reaching for food if you cannot get your breath together. And when someone told me that, I was like, what do you mean breathing? Like I'm breathing. And a lot of my chiropractors and doctors I was working with, they're like, girl, you're not breathing. Like you got to slow down. You got to breathe. Like I can tell you're not breathing. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm not breathing. Like we're talking like the right way to breathe. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you are not breathing, like good luck trying to get out of emotional eating. Like you have to get that dialed in. So he talks about how to, how to do that. 
Yeah, when I was going through a little short stint of, uh, a, I guess, a resurgence, a resurgence of emotional eating when I was going through my sleep deprived year, um, I dedicated, I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to promise myself to feed this hunger breath first and see what happens. And that was the first stage of being able to tackle that. Because when I did that, the first time I fell asleep during my dedicated, uh, it was like 10 or 20 minutes or whatever I decided I was going to do. And I fell asleep, right? So it is, it's like, oh, okay, let's get us out of that, that, um, uh, parasympathetic out of the sympathetic and back into the parasympathetic. And that's what breath does for us is beautiful. So absolutely. And it's, you don't, you can't realize how little you're breathing deeply with your diaphragm until you actually start doing it and catching yourself in the moment. So it, it takes a little bit of practice to be like, you know, just watch yourself in the middle of the work day. Like when it dawns on you, maybe set a reminder on your phone. Like, am I breathing every day at whatever day time you think you might be a little short? Just watch. Cause I bet you got your mouth open and I bet you're shallow breathing and all of that. So it, I love that. It's, it's, it's been wildly impacting for me. It, it definitely, yeah. definitely is truth and works and is effective for helping yeah. combat emotional eating. Yeah. It's funny. Cause we almost think it's too easy and it's mm -hmm. like, oh, but it's so powerful. Like all these things are what we already have in us. Mm -hmm. and it's like, it's, it's fascinating to me how simple it is and how powerful. So, because when we're not breathing for everyone that's listening, like we're signaling, like there's a lion chasing us and we have to run and we're in fight or flight. We need quick energy. We need like, we need a quick burst of energy. So we're going to like literally reach for something that's quick, um, or something that's going to calm our brain down because it's so it can soothe that fight or flight. So that's essentially what we're looking for is like, we're not running from the lion, but we want to calm down because we know there's not a lion behind us. Right. So it's like, that's how, if you can breathe, you can actually get out of that fight or flight and mm -hmm. just reaching for the food. So anyways, um, primarily that's what we're, we're getting oxygen to our brain and every, everything else can chill out. Yeah. And Josh was on my podcast too, talking about that stuff. So if you guys want to listen to my Josh Trent episode, I think it's episode 13, if I'm not mistaken. And he, there's links to his breathing program if that ends up speaking to you and I'm sure I'm sure um Aaron will have that in her summit as well yeah oh yeah yep and then another one is um that we're disconnected from our purpose we're not in alignment with our soul's purpose we're when we're stuck in a cubicle with a job we know isn't right and we should be doing something else that's what can cause us to emotionally eat too I interviewed Ben Azadi on that who talks about the deep importance of finding your purpose and when you're not in your purpose you're not lit up. Your vibrations are low, right? And when your mm -hmm. vibrations are low, you want to reach for something to like make you feel better, which is when we reach for the food again for the dopamine hit. Because when you're in your purpose, like right now, when I'm talking to you, I'm in my purpose, my vibes, I'm like vibrating so high. Mm -hmm. I'm not mm -hmm. eating food. I'm not thinking about food. Like mm -hmm. when you're Emilian on a ride and you're exhilarated, are you thinking about food? No. When you're at a football game at the Super Bowl, no, you're not thinking about food because your vibes are high, right? So mm -hmm. like if we're in our purpose, that is what, like when we're disconnected from purpose, that is what, what disconnects that high vibration. So that's why we have to get, do all the things that raise our vibes up. Um, mm -hmm. and one of them, like when you should get up, you should be like, I'm so freaking excited to work today. You know, that's how I felt mm -hmm. at the time with this summit. I'm like, I can't mm -hmm. wait to interview. And even though I'm editing like 20 hours a day, I'm like, I don't care. I freaking love this. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's kind of, uh, that's a kind of purpose we hope to, or at least get one step closer to it. Right. Yeah. Beautiful. Love it. Yeah. So another thing, um, when it comes to vibrations, um, getting those vibes up, right. is going to keep you from, from grabbing the food. Chiropractic is amazing. Um, eating superfoods like spirulina, chlorella, um, like I nano greens. I used to work for that company 10 years ago. I've been taking it every day since I started the like 50, like like massive, just nutrient dense, like powders that you can add into to your regimen in the morning. It's like, you're humming like a hummingbird. And when you're, and again, when you're humming, your vibes are up, you're just, you're feeling good. Like you don't, mm -hmm. cravings change, everything changes, mm -hmm. the way changes the way you feel. Um, yep. speaking of vibrations too, um, I had Emilio Palafox on from pulse centers and that's nice. another way. Yeah to increase that electrical charge in the body. So he talks about how when we lose electrical charge due to stress, toxins, chemicals, lack of oxygen, whatever it is, it's going to drop our charge. And so we have to reboot our whole body. And um, P PEMF is a way to mm -hmm. charge your cells. So is grounding and exercise and other things too. But 
he's working with the really sick clients that are like low, low, low vibration. So he talks about the positivity, like just the change that when you mm -hmm. this um, pulse therapy, it just completely brings your state up. And it's, ama it's an amazing biohack. For that. Definitely. I'm all about mimicking nature into our modern lives. And that's a way to do it. Like, it's great to go out and ground and lay out in the grass every day. But when you live in a cold state with three feet of snow all winter long, and there's no sunlight either, like these are amazing biohacks that we can do to get us more aligned with nature through using technology, which is super cool. Super cool. I'm a big fan of Pulse. And I did, I met him at Paleo FX and tried that. And I was blown away. I was like, you know, I'm not really interested in the stuff that doesn't that I don't really notice the difference. I'm like, eh, okay, there's lots of stuff out there. But that was when I was like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm listening. Cause I just, I'm feeling something right now. I'm feeling real different right now. So yeah, cool stuff. I, I'm excited to hear that interview. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's, it's an instant. Yeah. You can mm -hmm. literally feel a change. Mm -hmm. which is amazing. And, and, and then another one that is right in alignment with that is nature. And that's you and I are huge, yeah. huge, again, simple hacks, fresh air, sunshine, movement, and plugging your feet into the freaking ground. And, yep. and yes, everyone's like, well, that's hippie shit. Yep. Call yep. me hippie all damn day because that shit worked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> can I, can I add a story yeah. really quick? The other day I, there's a lake by my house and there's grass all around it at one part and I'm doing my little workout. There's some steps. I'm killing it. I'm just in the zone. You know, it's like, sometimes I'm just like, I just, it's, this is just for me, baby. Like I'm not sharing this on social. I don't give it, this is my time. And I'm out there and I'm like, Oh, and I, I crushed it and I take my socks and shoes off and I just lay out on the grass and I'm like, Oh man, took my music off. I'm just listening to birds and seagulls. And it's just amazing. And then I hear this lady, <laughs> and I don't know if it was a mom or a nanny or what, but she's like, get your shoes back on right now to this little like five-year-old girl. And they're like playing in the sand on the edge of the water. And the little girl's like, and she's like, and you should have socks on too. And she's yelling at her. And I, I don't mean to be, you know, I don't, I don't mean to judge, but I just know that she doesn't know. She doesn't know. And like, it broke my heart because the, the mom or the nanny, whoever it was, you could tell she was very unhealthy, both in her physicality, but also in her mentality. Cause it was just very over the top, you know? And, and I looked at this little girl and I just wanted to be like, don't listen to her. <laughs> Don't listen. <laughs> so really, so I walked right by my little barefoot self and just kind of, you know, made my presence. <laughs> I'm being a brat. I didn't say anything, but, um, you know, that I just wanted to add that because I know like my kids always wanted to run around barefoot outside. And it was like, there's like this big shame thing. Like my neighbors would be like, Kyle never has shoes on, you know? And it's like, you know what? Maybe we can change. I, I understand they need to be protected. I'm not going to let them ride a bike without shoes on or whatever, but man, we need to change that conversation with what we're doing with our kids. Cause it's old school teaching. I was like, it's almost like the ego for the parents that you're like, shoot kids have to have socks on shoes on. Like they're running around in the grass in their front yard. Please let them take their shoes off, please. And you need to take yours off too. <laughs> connect to the earth. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And uh, rant. <laughs> no, yeah. Well, if you think about it, we wake up, we put our feet on the floor. We're in a concrete house or whatever with carpet. Right. We, we put on our shoes. We go to the gym. We go to our office. We come back. We sit, we, we sit on the couch. Our feet are never plugged into the ground. And that when, again, when that will drop your charge. And when you connect into nature and you put your feet in the ground or you, it's with mm -hmm. a PMS pulse mm -hmm. therapy machine, like you are connecting to nature and your charge will go back up. And mm -hmm. when you get that charge up, your vibrations are higher. You are not going to reach for the food because you feel good. Like you don't need to soothe yourself because nature is literally filling you up. And that is what we are. We are literally wired for nature. Mm -hmm. and like, like when you go outside, don't put sunglasses on. Like you need the vitamin D in your eyes, on your skin. Like you need fresh air. That's actually a really amazing way to get a microbiome is like breathing fresh air in the mountains and in these like amazing ecos. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. you that and when you don't and you get disconnected like that is when everything goes downhill that's right and it's like even on a scientific le level the neg negative ions in the air and these heavily wooded areas or by running water waterfalls the ocean um not to mention the minerals that we're breathing in you know when i go hiking in the mountains here in utah this is mineral rich utah i mean we it's started as a mining town and so like i rub that sucker i rub dirt all over me i'm like i don't care if i'm a weirdo this is why i hike by myself i take my <laughs> shoes off i get in the dirt i wait wade in the little streams i'm just like Ugh, i'm soaking yeah. it all up <laughs> yeah, that's what you should be doing oh my gosh zach talks about rubbing dirt on your skin all the time i, I do <laughs> i love I, him i can't wait to interview him <laughs> yeah no it should be yeah and and you think about it you go to the beach right let's say you take a trip to california you go on the beach you lay on the beach all day you're not really hungry 
right? Right. Get in the sunshine. Your your feet mm-hmm. are in the sand. You're connected to the earth. You're relaxing. You're breathing. You're near mm-hmm. all the ions. Like if you think about it, that is how we should be doing that every day. Because when we don't, that's when we start getting the cravings. Like we we mm-hmm. get well, we gotta get out. Most I'm always like I gotta get outside or I'm gonna start eating. Right. Like your body's oh. like this. Like get me outside. Hundred percent. And you know my friend Jenny Lang Griffiths, she runs FitCon Summit here in Utah. She had this like epiphany one time, and I love it. She's like, we're just nature deficient. That's a this is just na- this is just nature deficiency. <laughs> All these problems is just they're a bunch of bunch of symptoms of nature deficiency. I'm like, amen, sister. Oh. Amen. <laughs> like you need to coin that. Like, yes. <laughs> yeah. And speaking of that, and speaking of um, being wired for nature, we're also wired for human connection. And this is where my emotional eating set in real hard because I was behind my computer when I was working from home. I wasn't talking to people, seeing people around people. And it is in our DNA to be near people in the physical form. Mm-hmm. And that. I think that's why everyone's struggling with quarantine so much is because we are not in physical form near people. And we are literally mm-hmm. wired to be with people. It, I mean, human connection, it is like, it's like mm-hmm. food. It's mm-hmm. we need it as much as we do food. Um, and there's a study done. I don't know if you ever um, heard the, the study on the baby that was um, in, they put it in a little cradle or whatever, gave it everything it needed, but it never had human connection and it died. Because it, no one, it was never touched. It was never like mm. there was human connection. And, um, that's a really powerful study. I don't know what it is, but it's a lot of people have referenced it. Um, you can Google it, but for example, like if I'm at a conference, right, there's people around me, you're surrounded by people, people like shaking hands, connecting, looking people in the mm-hmm. eye, mm-hmm. paleo FX, bulletproof, Dr. Pompous conferences, like you are being nourished and fed by human connection. And, mm-hmm. and I'm even think about food like maybe after at the end of the day we're like oh my god I'm so hungry because we've been walking around all day like our energy is everywhere you know we're just having so much fun and connecting but we forget that Mm -hmm. I don't even think about food but when I'm here in my computer behind my desk not in my purpose I'm like I'm going to the fridge and I'm opening up the freaking fridge and I'm looking around and I'm like girl what you're looking for is not in the fridge like (laughs) And so, cause I'm like, I, we don't even think that way when we're at these conferences or when, you know, so I, I started going to coffee shops and just working from coffee shops because mm-hmm. there's, no there. yep. and I'm like, Me too. Oh, these are so much better if I can just be around people. Mm-hmm. Yep. I do the same thing when that afternoon time comes. I'm like, I'm not sitting here. I definitely don't sit in my kitchen and work, you know, from home next to the pantry where all my keto snacks are. It's like, mm-hmm. that's just setting yourself up for disaster. And you're right. You're exactly right. Getting around some connection or being outside, going for a walk. That's another hack that I do. If I'm, yes. if I'm feeling munchy, if you're feeling munchy, but like broccoli doesn't sound good. That's kind of my, it's like, you're not actually hungry or even broccoli would sound good, you know? And so I'm like, you, you know, this is, this is not actual hunger. This is a stress response that you're trying to use food to medicate with. So go for a walk, girlfriend, go for a walk, you know, and if you can't get outside, go somewhere else, just get moving, get, get out of there. Cause that's definitely, that's, that's, I feel like once those, sometimes I call them the floodgates, once the floodgates are open, mm-hmm. <laughs> it can be disaster when you're eating emotionally and you're not actually hungry that's yeah. you don't want to open those floodgates so it's like finding that what how else can you train that stress response into yourself yeah so and um oh, oh yeah go ahead what were you gonna say no no go ahead yeah keep going um yeah if you think about it right if we're sitting all day our our energy is like vibrating like this like we have to get the energy out and mm-hmm. so by in turning to food to get us to calm down that's what we're seeking. But if we go move, we can get that anxious energy out. And same with dancing. Mm-hmm. I interviewed Rachel Brooks Smith. Nice. She's a freaking, she dances, she shakes her stuff out. She like moves like every, she'll get yeah. up and take 15 minute dance party breaks. And she swears by that. Like, cause if you awesome. think about it, when you're dancing, if you're at your favorite club back in the day when we went to clubs, um, you know, in Vegas, your song, your, your song comes on and your jam comes on. You are like high vibration. Mm-hmm. You are not thinking about food. Like, no, <laughs> like that is my song and you will dance all night and so it's like when you can get in that state where you can just dance and move and move your body like that in any way you're you're gonna like your cravings will go way way down 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's even um, research that shows that when you move, when you even just going for a walk, any form of cardio, which dancing, I guess, could fall into that. I mean, they've shown in research that it decreases ghrelin, your hunger hormone, and increases leptin. So, And you're also increasing your insulin sensitivity. You're setting yourself up for all these wins. But even in the immediate, that's a hack. So, like, let's say afternoon cravings are an issue for you. Like, just plan an afternoon walk. I eat lunch, and then 20 minutes later, I go for my afternoon walk. Like, beautiful life hack. Because now you're decreasing stress, you're getting some sunshine, you're not emotionally eating, you're actually using up probably calories, you're increasing your digestion. So finding that flow like that, it's like it's or doing a dance party. If you can't go outside, do a freaking dance party. Why not? Look up one of look up one of Brooke's videos and copy what she does. She's got awesome stuff on Instagram. <laughs> Our Brooke Smith. <laughs> my spirit animal, man. She's in yeah. she disrupts everything and I love it. She just she just goes <laughs> all out there and just puts it out there. And I'm yeah, like, awesome. why are we dancing? We lost right. that like sense it's like no we got to bring that back that's what we're craving too I think is just joy right and like finding mm -hmm. joy in our day too mm -hmm. um, that's another one anyways okay so another one is physical touch and, he, and like I'm talking like there's one thing with human connection and being around humans but the physical touch mm -hmm. of a hug like mm -hmm. again you call me hippie all day I'm all about the hugs like you need at least 12 freaking hugs a day Zach Bush told me that I was like because it releases the oxytocin, right? And mm -hmm. like, we're, again, we're wired to be near humans, whether that's hugging, touching somebody on the arm, snuggling, yes, and sex too, of course. Amazing for releasing oxytocin. Like, you, when you, even when you get a massage, like you mm -hmm. feel better because it's, uh, yes, the massage is winning, but actual, you need the physical touch. And so mm -hmm. if we're not getting that snuggle time, the hugs, the anything, guarantee you like I notice when I'm dating someone I'm way less likely to reach for the food because I'm mm -hmm. getting I'm getting the love all that but when I'm but when I'm not I'm like wow it's like mm -hmm. different so I have to do certain things that where I'm like surrounding myself by my nephews giving them a huge hug hugging my mom mm -hmm. like strangers you know mm -hmm. whatever it is but you got to get you got to get it with people Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes people will be like, man, how do you do it with four kids? Like, cause you know, I'm single and I've got four kids and I'm like, actually, I feel like my stress level, I have, I have them 50, 50. So every other week I'm like, I feel like my stress levels are lower in a lot of ways the week that I, the weeks that I have them because I'm getting that physical affection. I'm getting that human connection. They're forcing me to kind of pull out of my stress state. Cause like they want to talk to me about stuff, you know? And so now I'm, you know, I'm getting that connection and you're absolutely right. Like, I'm like, no, actually like the weeks that I don't have them or the weeks that I'm like freaking dialed in because I'm like doing so much work, but it, it's more stressful week for me for sure. So yeah, you're, I, I mean, I think we can all relate to that. I think we've all noticed that in our lives that when we have more connection and more physical touch that our stress levels are lower. Yeah. That oxytocin, man, it's a game changer. Mm -hmm. it, it just calms you down. Man, if they could bottle up and sell oxytocin, we would be... <laughs> I know. I know when I was, I was going through a dating hiatus, I'm kind of going through one again right now, but I was going through a little break from dating and I made sure I was getting my weekly massages because I was like, I just, I need to be touched. So I don't start making bad choices. <laughs> I, know. I, know. I know. I know. And in quarantine too, it's like, we, again, we need, we need that human connection more than ever. And it's so, mm -hmm. um, and then another one is, which again, I want to talk, you can fill in the blanks on this one. This is your expertise is the restriction and the freaking chronic cardio and the cal caloric restriction and the like white knuckle grip on everything completely backfires and causes just to binge and just go right. Like versus mm -hmm. doing the opposite, lifting weights, right? Like lifting has been the game changer for me for cravings. But anyways, you talk about. Yeah. I mean, if, if you can't, if you can't understand that you have an inner child in there and your inner child has a little bit of a tood, then you can't get anywhere with this. Cause like, like I always say, if I told if Micah is my seven year old and he is like, he has a little attitude. Like he is a little firebolt. Like I, I love him. He reminds me a lot of me. Like he's kind of like, you're not going to tell me my business a little bit, you know? And so if I walked up to Micah and was like, Micah, you can't have candy ever again. You know, he, the, all, all of a sudden now out of nowhere, Micah wants candy. And so like, why do we do this to ourselves? Why do we set these crazy restrictions? I like my brat side in me, like if I, if I feel any sort of food restriction owning me, like I can't have that. I will like purposely eat that every single day for like two months until I don't want it anymore because I 
don't want that psychological. I, it's to me, what's worse eating a super clean, perfect paleo primal diet with everything perfect from nature, but you're psycho about food restrictions and you're stressed out. And then actually you're not perfect at it because every six or seven days you go on some crazy freaking binge and you hate yourself. Like, Hmm, which one's worse for your stress levels that, or just whenever you randomly feel like it, you have like a Reese's peanut butter cup or four even not, not going to, but you, that's all you have because you're like, and eh, I just wanted a few of those. Like I'm good. And you move on and you're in your happy way, which one's going to be worse. So creating these crazy restrictions, I say, even though I coach keto, which is a very restrictive diet, like even if, if you're technically in a restrictive mode, you have to stay remembering that you're choosing and that you can change whenever you want. You can every single day that you're keto, you could have cupcakes if you wanted, but you don't want that because you're not choosing that. Right. And so what can I choose instead while I do keto? Oh, I can make freaking keto cupcakes or buy a million different companies. I can still have cupcakes, you know? And so it's like staying in your power because once you get in that restrictive mode and you start binging, you are setting yourself up for freaking disaster. I have had clients that I put on chips that I put on chocolate. I'm like every single day with lunch, you have chips because we need to get past this. So it's on the docket. It's crazy how that falls away once yeah. the permission has been granted. So yeah, you're setting us, yourself up for disaster. If you're allowing food, which is for you to become the, this thing that owns you now. Um, mm -hmm. no, that's not how it works. <laughs> so yeah. 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 And we, and we also, and your interview was so good. We were just, you just crushed that interview in the summit. It was, we talked about the power of weightlifting versus mm. chronic, you know, how much more powerful right. that is one to control your in or like to get a grip on that insulin and get a grip on those cravings versus creating you to eat. Like I remember getting out of spin class, I would eat the whole freaking supermarket and it's like, it yep. just backfired versus if I lift, it's like, it's way different. With way different. Food is, you handle your food. It's way different. Right. Yeah. And you are increasing your metabolism and you're increasing the absorption of those chemicals. It's like, um, I think Kathy Smith, she is awesome. She has a book, I believe it's called something like feed muscle, starve fat or somewhere yeah. along those lines. And when you can get in that mentality of like, Ooh, baby, all this food is going to help me build muscle. Like it's a very, it's a much more proactive, happy, uh, building kind of place versus a restrictive, like burn off all the calories. Don't eat food, burn off all the calories. If you want to just live in hell, just try to burn, use exercise as a way to burn off calories all the time and starve yourself. That will, you will never get where you want to go. I mean, maybe the few super hyper controlled people with a few of them, but they will live in hell the entire time. Exercise is not about burning calories. I never ever use cardio or any of that as like a way to earn food. This is a, this is something that has become popularized. Like everybody in America is like, I'm going to go earn my pie for Thanksgiving. That mentality is what's screwing us all up. Don't you don't ever look at exercise as a way to burn calories. That is not what exercise is for. And it will never be an effective weight loss tool. It is all nutrition, right? So it's um, staying in these empowered mindsets, but I do think women, I think women could have so much more, um, health wise, if they would lift weights more specifically women, I mean, obviously men too, if they're not lifting weights weights, but they tend to be drawn to it more because it's more socially expected of men to lift weights. Women, it's kind of optional. Like, it's like, Oh, are you going to be like a weight girl? <laughs> it's like this, it's like this optional, like a uh, <laughs> mask you can wear or something when we all need that because we aren't outside physical, like we are intended naturally to be, we don't have to be. That's cool. That opens up a lot of opportunity in our life to do other things with our time. That's awesome. But we still, from a physical standpoint, need that because now our metabolisms are increased, not to mention stuff like bone density and all that, but you're from a food and eating perspective, you can eat more food when your metabolism is faster. And now you are less likely to become deprived of nutrients, right? And we don't want malnourished women. Like we need micronutrients and eating, building muscle allows us to get more of those simply because we can just eat more food throughout the day and not get fat. So it increases the likelihood that you'll be more nourished. Weights are like sleeping. Like it's, it's, it's like the game changer. It's a gateway to so many things, right? Totally. It's, it's just incredible. Um, and speaking of that, um, uh, toxic perfectionism was another one that we talked about. Mm -hmm. Bell. And, um, damn, that was a good one. Um, we're more, when we're literally, this is on the brain wiring and the, and the, and the emotional stuff. When we are hustling for our worth, when we're seeking mm. something 
the outside, that's when we, the emotional eating happens. When we're trying to prove to the world who we are, doing too many things at once, going too fast, not taking care of ourselves, not breathing, not slowing down when we're, we're doing everything else and we're like anxious and, and outside of our bodies, like we are trying to earn our worth. And our worth is established from the second we're born. And perfectionists always want to change our, the, like increase the worth, right? And you mm-hmm. can't. She talks about how that was like one of the most profound things that she had said was that your worth is established the second you're born and you cannot change it. And when you listen to more, you'll understand um, everything. Mm-hmm. It. But um, I was like, shoot, because yeah, I mean, wh- when you think about it as women, like we, we want to prove like, like we hustle, for, we, like the, the women today, it's like, we got to be the um, amazing mom. We got to be in shape and we got to have the multi-million dollar business. We have to do it all. Right. And then it's like, for what, you know, what, what's going I on? Think- yeah. yeah. And I think when you, when you find your worth, when you understand your worth, you actually can have those things right. because you tend to make choices that are in your own best self-interest because you know your worth and right. it becomes easier. It's like, you can almost have the same actions. You can be an awesome mom and you can have a banging body and you can have an awesome business because you want to, because you like to, because you enjoy it. Not because you have to, because you got to prove something because you're not enough. And that's when your stress levels are like way lower. Cause you're like, I'm a powerful creator, baby. This yeah. is what I do instead of, Oh my gosh, if I can just get more like this, then, then that good thing can happen. Then I can earn this, you know? And it's like, I've been in that place for sure of like having to earn it, having to show it, having to prove it. Yep. Freak, man, that's a, that's a grind. But when you know your worth first and then you're just choosing it because you want to, that's a whole different vibration. Right. Beautiful. It's, it's the act of, of when you're in that space you're talking about, it, that's receiving, that's feminine mm-hmm. power, right? Mm-hmm. Versus mm-hmm. the masculine energy is go get hustle. I'm not good enough until I'm not good enough until, mm-hmm. right? Oh, and Josephina Besh out, who's amazing. She's a sensuality coach. She talks about that too, how too many times we can get caught up in the masculine energy of the doing and we're not in the receiving in mm-hmm. the feminine power, which is, yeah, the, we know our worth. We, we know, like, we know mm-hmm. how to call it in versus mm-hmm. getting it. Granted, you have to put the action steps into your mm-hmm. dream. It's a different thing. Mm-hmm. But when we're disconnected from our divine feminine power, from our body, from like our bodies being these amazing vessels and like connecting to every single part of our body. Like how often do we thank our feet and our legs for carrying us Mm -hmm. for however many years? And like, how often do we just thank, like how often are we connecting to our, our actual feminine and Matt and you know, men as well, but like she's talking to Mm -hmm. the ladies, but but when we don't do that, we like, we're, we're, we're missing the connection to ourselves. We're craving mm-hmm. so yeah. we're for food to feel something because we're not feeling anything here. Mm-hmm. And that was well that's one of the yeah. best chills right now. That was one of the best. Yeah. So yeah. And there's more, there's more and more and more and more. And, and there's personal stories of women that went through abuse and trauma that share their own personal stories. They're not necessarily cool. like an expert in the field, but there's like seven girls that have had like traumatic situations where they've, like they tell their story too. So I, I really try and bring the, that, it's that awesome. I think that's so powerful too. So yeah, it is. there's power in being understood and knowing that you're not alone and that you're not yeah. weird or abnormal. And that, because when there's secrecy and there's silence about it, then we have shame. So it's, it's cool that you brought that angle in too. Cause people were like, Oh, okay. This is like actually like an issue. It's not just me all by myself. Like, uh, okay. And there's strength in that. Right. So that's, that's awesome. You brought that angle in too. Yeah. How, and, how can people, yeah, I, I, Oh, what were you going to say? I was going to say, how can people get in on this? But what were you going to say? Yeah, I was going to say, well, Sean Horn um, talks about shame too. She's she's a mm. shame specialist. So she talks about that. Cool. Um, Kate Geller talks about shame as well. Angie Green, ta- or uh, Angie Fletcher talks about um, lack of awareness and like just, uh, yeah, um, just incredible, awesome. incredible stuff that is like the deep stuff that we need to be addressing that that is related to shame and shame spiraling. Um, and that was really powerful too. Um, I was going to mention somebody else, but there's so many, uh, I'll just, you guys just have to watch it, but yeah, it's, um, we're launching it May 19th. Um, it's called, it's just what we crave.com and that's it. And it's free for, we're going to have it free for a week to watch. And then I'll post. Yeah. You can make a post about it. Yeah. And then of course, if you want to, you know, eventually some, there's so much content in there. A lot of people, you know, you can buy it if you want for your own library. And just cause I love the repeating everything is how I start to Mm -hmm. read 
brain. So I'm like, if I can just listen to these over and over again, I can rewire my brain. Yep. <laughs> Um, and so that's really helpful, but, um, yeah, otherwise it's free. You can watch it and it's just freaking like, I just, I, my heart and soul is in this thing. And so I can't wait for everyone to see it and watch it. And I'm sure we'll do more after that too. Cause there's so many other people I could have interviewed, but I think it's just the beginning of something that it really needs to be talked about right now. So yeah, just- absolutely. Especially with everyone being woken up to it during Corona, you know, it's like, you can't escape. Guess what? You got to face all your demons. You got to deal with this. Maybe you might want to fix this thing, you know? And so it's cool that you're helping people understand, okay, what could possibly be going on with me physiologically? What could possibly be going on with me psychologically, emotionally? And what I would say, like on some of these summits like this that I've gotten, I, what I'll do is I watch all of them, all the videos, and I'll take notes just like I'm in a course, you know, it's like a really cheap, high level nutrition course is kind of how I look at it when I invest in one of these summits and I take notes and then I notice when I go back to watch it. So, you know, maybe a few months later, like, I'm like, I don't know, I kind of want to get in on that thing again. What I've noticed, um, I did this with Jason Prawl's human longevity project. What I noticed was like, I had so deeply taken those things in. I felt like the expert now, like I, I kind of had brainwashed myself with their thoughts. Cause I was like, Oh yeah, this is how I think now. This is, <laughs> this is stuff I've been saying. This is stuff I've been living. And it's like going back and coming full circle like that. It's kind of like reading a book, like the four agreements again, you know, you go back and read it and you're like, yeah, I know this stuff. I've been living it for the last year or whatever, since I first read this, that feels really good. So if you're, if emotional eating is an issue for you, which it probably is because it is for almost everyone, (laughs) I would recommend doing that. Like take some notes, you know, see what speaks to you and then try the things like experiment with them. So thank you so much, Aaron, for putting this together. Cause I know you've got a lot going on. This, you've got a full-time job on top of all the other things you're doing and you're busting butt putting this together. So thank you so much for doing it and roping together all these amazing connections that you have in the health industry. Um, can people come find you? Oh, let's roll quick. Where can they, you want to tell about your other Instagram account that they might want to follow real quick? You oh, want to talk about? Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's totally separate, but yeah, it's a uh, spontaneous mm-hmm. halos. Um, I am also on the side, a, uh, like, I am on a major mission to spread kindness, um, in a very unique way that is, uh, it's, I have a massive vision, but, but if you check out my Instagram page, it's basically just a, um, I'm just, I'm just on fire for lighting people up with kindness, like old school, random acts of kindness, like it is like handwritten notes with a freaking like, like old school stuff before digital, the digital age, you know, took over, like the stuff that we are really craving is human connection. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep. You're living it. It's spontaneous. Halos guys on Instagram. That's like one of my favorite accounts to follow. Erin is, she's always doing it. Erin's the kind of person like you guys got to know this woman. Like I wish everyone could have an Erin in their life because like, like I left some shoes on a trip at a conference we were at and she mails them back to me with like, you sent like every snack that I had purchased over the course of being together. So some of the, some awesome, awesome, you know, drink mix that you had that I was liking all these amazing things, wonder woman stickers all over the, this is Aaron guys. This is Aaron. So, um, so much love and so much caring coming from what you're doing. And I know that you are so intuitive and connected to source and that this has come from like a, basically a divine call for you, you know, and thank you for putting the action for Cause I know it's going to help so many people, so many people. So way to freaking be living thank and you. acting and doing it's freaking hard work. I know you've been kicking, kicking ass working on this thing. So guys, what what we crave. Dot com May 19th is the launch. You can watch it for free for a week. Do not miss it. Get on there. Go get it. Take notes. And then, yeah, let Erin know, you know, send her a message. Let her know what it, how, what impact it had on you. So, yeah, thank you so much for having me, Tara. Like I, I'm, I'm chill. I have chills right now. So I know we're doing something right. Right. Yeah, we are <laughs> like, yes, like keep doing this. Thank you for putting this out there and for just being such an amazing human that is, I look up to you and you inspire me to be my best self. And, um, you're just freaking amazing. And we all need a Tara in our life too. So thanks girl. Thanks girl. I appreciate you. I love you. All right, guys. Thanks. Thanks, Aaron. We'll wrap it up here. Okay.